Hey guys, in this video I will be covering the DNA replication topic of the A-level biology curriculum. So let's begin. So, DNA replication occurs by what is called semi-conservative replication. In this, when the new DNA molecules are formed, it would contain one original DNA strand and a new strand. So, for example, in this case, um, the grey indicates the uh, original strands and the blue indicates the new strands. So what would happen is there would be one original strand and one new strand, as you can see. Okay, so the process of DNA replication. This has been uh, a six marker in the previous exams and it, it comes up a lot, so make sure you learn this. So the first step is that the DNA helicase breaks the hydrogen bonds between the bases. Okay, so this is a DNA molecule. It has two strands uh, made of nucleotides and it's attached via hydrogen bonds between the two strands. So what happens is that the DNA helicase would break all of these hydrogen bonds uh, between the bases and uh, this means that um, but the strands are separated and that's why both of these strands uh, can act as templates. Alright, so then what happens is that the free-floating DNA nucleotides base pair with the exposed bases via specific complementary base pairing. Make sure that you mention complementary base pairing. So in this case, these are the um, two DNA strands we've got and they're both uh, acting as templates. So what happens is that, for example, if we have um, the cytosine um, and then we have the guanine and we have um, the thymine. So what would happen is that the complementary base pairing would occur. So T-thymine would um, base pair with adenine, and cytosine would base pair with guanine, and guanine would base pair with cytosine. And so this is one of the mark points. So adenine to thymine and cytosine to guanine. And then the DNA polymerase joins the adjacent nucleotides by forming phosphodiester bond in a condensation reaction. So the DNA uh, polymerase would come, come along and it would join all the, uh, the base pairs and the complementary by complementary base pairing that are joined uh, and that would form a phosphodiester bond in a condensation reaction. And this would form a new DNA molecule uh, by semi-conservative replication and uh, because it has a new strand and um, so because the new strand contains one original and one uh, new strand as we have mentioned previously so make sure you learn these mark points these um, these mark points would um, come um, a lot of the times so the DNA polymerase um, creates the bonds the phosphodiester bonds in five prime to three prime direction. So, and why is this? Uh, it's because the DNA has anti-parallel strands. So what this means is, for example, in this case, th this is the DNA uh, strand. So on one side, it's running from the five prime end to the three prime end, but on the other side, on below that, it's running from three prime to five prime end. So as you can see, it's the opposite. Um, in this side we have 5 and 3, but it's not 5 and 5. So that's why DNA has anti-parallel strands. And the DNA polymerase is an enzyme, as, as the, all the enzymes have a specific active site, because DNA, DNA polymerase is an enzyme, it has a specific active site, which only binds to substrate with a complementary shape. So the, um, the substrate should have a complementary shape which um, the active site of the enzyme DNA polymerase can bind to and it's active so so the for the case of DNA polymerase its active site is complementary to the three prime end of um, the old strand so for example this is the old strand so the DNA polymerase would come from this side it cannot come from this side because it would not be complementary from there so that's why it would um, start from the three prime end um, of the old strand and it would move in the three to five direction so in this direction 
and the phosphodiester bonds are created within the new strand in a 5-2 prime direction. So what happens is as the DNA polymerase moves in the 3-2-5 prime direction, the phosphodiester, the phosphodiester bonds are created in the opposite the 5 prime to 3 prime direction because as you can see if I say this is the DNA polymerase as it's moving from the 5 to 3 direction and the the um, it's where it's forming the phosphodiester bonds is in the other strand and this is going because the the DNA strands are anti-parallel and that's why it's going from the uh, five to five prime to three prime direction instead of going from the three prime to five prime, five prime direction. All right, so the Watson and Crick model. So this was what was done to prove that DNA replication occurs by the semi-conservative uh, replication. So what they did, so basically uh, DNA, so bacterial DNA has nitrogen and there are two types of nitrogen. You can either have the heavier uh, 15 um, nitrogen or the lighter, which weighs 14. So there's two types of nitrogens and bacteria um, can have either of them. So the DNA has nitrogen and you can have either the 15 or the 14 nitrogen. So what the, they did was they obtained bacteria with only the heavier um, nitrogen um, so the DNA um, contained the 15 nitrogen and so this was the parent the first DNA uh, strand so all of the nitrogen was heavy because they only had the 15 wing nitrogen so when you centrifuge something um, it shows you the density so for this case the nitrogen they um, nitrogen turned out to be heavier so the heavier things go at the bottom and because this is heavy, this went at the bottom. All right, so these are, this is the parent DNA strand. So there's only one because there's no replication that's occurred now. So that's the DNA strand and it has um, the 15 um, containing nitrogen. So the heavier nitrogen. So what they then did was they transferred the bacteria to the lighter um, nitrogen, 14 nitrogen containing medium and then they allowed the um, the bacteria to divide once and so this is the first generation because um, the bacteria has divided once and when they centrifuged it what they found was all of the um, the the nitrogens were in the middle so the the mass the density was intermediate so it it, it wasn't heavy anymore it wasn't um, at the bottom but it was intermediate now and um, so this was in the middle. So what this showed was because they, the, the replication has occurred. So it must have had a new strand from the 14 mass wing nitrogen because that's why it turned out to be in the middle. And then the second generation, when they allowed the bacteria to divide again, it contained half intermediate and half light at the top. So this showed that the DNA strand would have some, looked something like this. So they would have, would have contained uh, four original strands from the previous, um, the, from the previous replication and also the four new blue and uh, the 14 uh, wing nitrogens um, as well. So, so this showed that the replication occurred by the semi-conservative so it contains one of the original strands and one new strand. So that proved semi-conservative replication.